this is Rich Lavens of Eurotherm by Watlow, and today we're going to do a tutorial on the Eurotherm EPAC, um, how to reset it in the field, and how to run through the quick code. So, out of the box, this thing should prompt you for a quick code. You'll run through that, which I'll show you in a minute, and set up the unit uh, like it's fresh out of the box. If you have a unit in the field that somebody's been pushing buttons, you don't know what the, uh, the IP address is, you forgot a password, there is a reset procedure. So first thing, if you've got an Ethernet cable hooked into it, disconnect it. We have our page key, our down, up, and enter key. So we're going to toggle on this page key. And we're going to go to config, hit enter. By default, that passcode is three, hit enter. You pop up here, leave it where it's at, hit enter one more time when you see config code. So if you skip it, just use the up down buttons, go back to config code. When you change that to a zero and hit enter, the unit recognizes zero as it's about to be reset. So it comes back, but hit your down arrow and you have a clear memory field, hit enter. And yes, we want to clear that memory. Enter again. So the unit will clear the memory. So it's going to wipe out every setting you had in that and come back up in a reboot like it's fresh out of the box from the factory. So it will prompt you. The first thing is, what language do you want? So we're going to hit enter. And it's defaulted to English, but I can have French, German, Italian, so forth. But in my case, we're going to leave it in English. Um, an EPAC will go to 500 volts maximum for the switching of the load. But you may not have 500. Mine's defaulted to 230. I'm just using uh, a 120 circuit off my, uh, my house receptacle. So we're going to switch that to 120. This is important because the EPAC is going to look for a certain voltage to know that it's running correctly. So if you've got a 120 volt circuit, but you left that at 230, it's going to confuse the unit and it just won't fire right. So 120, ah, I waited too long. So again, you gotta be somewhat quick. So we're gonna run back down to 120 again. No big deal. The longer you hold the button, the faster it increments. 120, enter. Same thing with the uh, I nominal, that's your current. So it's going to be looking for the current of your load. So this is a 16 amp unit, but if I'm only switching five amps, which I am, I need to tell the controller that five amps is normal, five amps. Firing mode, we have burst variable, half cycle, phase angle, logic, and burst fixed. Um, Burst variable is a zero cross type of firing where the, uh, the, the time base is variable. So that's a good way to fire a resistive load. So I'm going to leave it there. We have our control mode, voltage squared, I squared, open loop. Voltage squares is pretty common for resistive loads. So I'm going to leave it there. Is it a transformer? Is it a transformer coupled load? Yes or no, mine is not. And the type of heater, we've got some different heaters in here, resistive, infrared, silicon carbide, polydisilicide, but in my case, it's just a simple resistive load, so I'm going to leave it. Our analog input, so how are you going to fire this? If you're feeding a 0 to 10 volt control signal or a 4 to 20 for set point, we're going to leave it there. And then what is that? So in my case, I want to leave it in 4 to 20. Enter. We have a digital input uh, defaulted to a firing enable. So uh, there's, a, there's a wire on the bottom of the unit. You either going to have to jumper that or wire it to a selector switch and on off. So it's basically the firing enable input. You can make that different things, but I'm going to leave it. Second digital input is alarm acknowledge, but again, you can have other options. We're going to leave it at alarm acknowledge. And I'll show you some of this in iTools in a moment. Uh, the link speed, we're going to leave that in auto negotiated. And then the address. So the IP mode is actually the address DHCP or fixed. 
You may have to talk to your IT department on what that should be set for. In my case, I usually leave it as fixed, and then you're going to enter the address of the network. So in my case, it's 192.168.111. So again, we're going to hold that button down until I get to 111. The longer you hold the button, the faster it goes. Pretty close there, 111. And I'll leave it at address 20. Subnet mask, I'm not going to change. And then finally, finish. Yes. Hit enter. It'll reboot. And there we go. So when I plug this in, if you're using iTools uh, and you, uh, you know, want to password protect this, as soon as you plug that in, it's going to show you a quick password. 374, I missed it, too quick. Okay, so what was it? If I hit the up arrow, there is the password, 374, 263. We're going to write that down. Because it could be important later. And now we are going to go to iTools. All right, so here we are at iTools. So um, I've already downloaded the program. So I'm going to come up to my apps. I'm going to find the iTools folder. And I'm going to select iTools Engineering Studio. Now, from the EPACS perspective, um, that thing is ready to go. If you want to use iTools, I'm just going to kind of dive into that just a little bit. But after we ran through that reset procedure and power up, the unit is ready to go. So um, I have got an add button here. So I want to look at add. And there's my EPAC. I also have a NanoDAC hooked up to this. So we're going to hit OK. Now, although I had you write down that password, which is a good idea, it will prompt you in iTools to set a new password. So we're going to hit Yes. And I've got two monitors here. So over on my screen, there's my EPAC. And I want to give it a, a password. So, so we're going to do E, capital E, P, A, C, K, one, zero, exclamation point. So you have to have a certain number of uppercase, lowercase digits. So again, you can make that what you want. Don't forget this. So we're going to do this, and we're going to copy that. And I'm going to show you a trick. So we're going to apply that to that EPAC. Now, I just heard the EPAC reset, so it accepted that number. And it's applying that, so we'll just uh, be patient. All right. Succeeded to set the comms password. So we're going to hit OK. So my EPAC's up here. And I'm going to hit the graphical wiring tab. And in my EPAC, here's the setup, we, the block diagram that is configured when you run through that quick code. So up here uh, is my network. Here's the 4 to 20 milliamp input signal we set up. Here's the second digital input for alarm acknowledge. Up here is that other digital input for the firing enable. So this one here, I usually get a call, hey, my EPAC won't fire. And there's one, uh, one common <laughs> uh, cause, and it's this one. This is looking for a digital high input to enable that firing circuit. So you either have to jumper across that terminal block to, to trick it or wire it to a selector switch or whatever. Um, that's the most common issue I have. The second most common issue is that the EPAC was left in configuration mode. In configuration mode, the EPAC won't do a thing. It's a safety. So you're going to have to log back out to the operator mode. And then I'm going to show you the third most likely cause of an EPAC not firing as well. So anyway, that is that. Up here is our access mode. So I'm going to click out of that. 
So we are out. So we're you're in run mode. If I wanted to make any changes, I'm going to show you a change. I want to that that password I copied and pasted, EPAC one zero exclamation. Here's my trick: drag a comment block out. So the minute I go to make a change in this graphical wiring page, it's going to ask me what that password is. So EPACK10 exclamation point. Now I'm back in this access mode. Here's my trick. Password. Put it there. I can enter this as a note. Up here, this is the execute or download wiring to instrument uh, box. That password, the next person that scans this in iTools is going to see this note. That note does not show up anywhere on the actual instrument. So it's my little, it's my little hack in case I forget a password. I can note it here. So that's my little hack. I was also going to show you uh, the other reason that an EPAC may not fire. So I'm going to go to my other monitor here. Okay, so this is out of the engineering manual, which is a download from the website. This wire, there's a reference voltage needed, and a lot of people will forget to wire this. So off the back side of the load, we recommend using a small fuse, two amps, an amp is fine. And then it comes up into a two pin connector on the EPAC and that connector is labeled L slash line two. Now only one of those actually has a terminal in it. So it's kind of hard to mess it up. This wire needs to be here or it's not going to fire. That's the, again, another common uh, step people miss. And then it causes the thing not to, to you know, do its job. So again, just a little heads up on that. Really, this thing's ready to go. So I'm going to take this back out of access mode, and that thing should, should run. Give it a 4 to 20 input signal, and you should be good to go. Uh, I hope you all find this helpful, but please uh, drop us an email and give us a call. Thank you so much.